كتير طرق وسط الحياة تاهو فيها ناس وطرق تبان مفروشة وارد وتنتي بألم ودي لكن الطريق للفرحة وطريق الخلاص عند المسيح أصل المسيح Yeah, and welcome to The Way TV. Glad to be back. Uh, hey, we're just going to jump right into the clips, and we're doing this because uh, President Obama now wants to destroy the First Amendment for real. He wants people like me or anybody who tells the truth about Islam to be shut down, especially when I tell the truth about what did Muhammad do. But before that, before that, hey, let's show the picture of the guy ISIS there who converted to Jesus. There we go. Okay. Joseph Nasrallah, this guy was, was ISIS past tense. He's converted to Christianity. Joseph Nasrallah led him to Christ by asking through the Way TV, if you can show me three good things that Muhammad did compared to what did Jesus do. If you can show me just three good things, what did Muhammad do compared to what did Jesus do, that he and I would convert over to Islam. We would join ISIS and we go around and kill everybody doing what did Muhammad do. But it ain't going to happen. So next week, maybe, maybe I'll take a few phone calls. I don't know. Adam and I don't really like to do that because we get crazy phone calls. Okay. So Mohammed, I'm sorry, Obama, Obama, Mohammed, Mohammed, Obama. Is there any difference? Obama wants to destroy the First Amendment, but here we have the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in America coming on to say that a good Muslim does believe in the First Amendment after the Charlie Hebdo murder. I showed this last week. We're going to do it again. The leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in America, a liar named Nihad Awad. Actually, he's a good Muslim because he's a liar doing what did Muhammad do. Okay, clip number one ahead, clip number one. Islamic leaders across the world have condemned the attack in Paris. But what is the role of moderate Muslims in battling extremism? Nihad Awad is the executive director and co-founder of the Council on American-Islamic Relations. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Nihad, uh, good to have you with us. Uh, you know, while you. there were condemnations from the Arab League and leaders of Muslim nations, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Tunisia, are Muslim nations and their leaders, in your view, doing enough to condemn and battle terrorism? I think it's very important to condemn terrorism and differentiate uh, between terrorism and Islam, even between jihad and Islam. Just a while ago, I heard an Al Jazeera show, a major analyst saying that these jihadists, referring to them as terrorists. So you cannot, you cannot equate jihad, which is a legitimate thing, with terrorism, which is not legitimate. So the choice of words is very important, and it is uh, critically important for all of us, including our organization, which has condemned the terrorism today, to continue to speak against these, uh, this phenomenon and to save our faith, the faith that 1.6 billion people live it and love it, but we have few extremists who took control of our image uh, through, uh, unfortunately, uh, high-profile uh, execution styles and murders like what we have seen today. So we have to continue to differentiate and uh, save our faith from the hands of the few. Right. Uh, so, so it is important. And also uh, the fact that we encourage our communities, especially in the West, to be civically engaged, to speak truth to power, uh, to use the, the Islamic means of making change, which is to live your faith, to interact with people, to, rub, to love your neighbor, and also to work within the system to change things, things that, you, that you disagree with, including even dealing with the opposition, those who mock you, those who disagree with you. We 
Wow, I can only take so much tequila, which is Arabic for lying, and that's clearly lying. Hey, reality is a crutch for those who cannot handle drugs or, in this case, Islam. Nihad Awad, leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States, clearly has been labeled by the United Arab Emirates CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, which he heads up as being a terrorist organization. Okay, about Obama against the First Amendment. The White House says Obama, Obama will fight the media to stop anti-jihad articles. Really, the First Amendment exists so that we the people can peaceably assemble to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Well, our grievance is simple. We don't want Charlie Hebdo being murdered. And we don't want the fatwas against people like myself and Joseph Nasrallah who tell the truth about Islam. What's the deal? Why all the lying? Reality is a crutch for those who cannot handle drugs ah, or the truth or the truth about Islam. Obama, from the article, more self-censorship and voluntary acceptance of Sharia blasphemy laws. In other words, when I was in the Marine Corps and I raised my right hand to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies foreign and domestic, especially the First and Second Amendment, then these characters come here based on religion, Islam, and if you laugh or pillory, you tell the truth about Muhammad, what did he do? Not only do they want to kill you, but they want to destroy our laws about the First Amendment too. And by the way, the First Amendment is not absolute. Anything that's dangerous by its very nature, which is Islam, what did Muhammad do? Found in 22 verses of the Quran, that's my left hand. This is my right hand, this is my left hand. It may be different on your TV because it's reversed, I'm not sure. This is a Quran, 22 verses in a Quran. Tell a good Muslim to lie, to steal, to cheat, to be a thug, to murder, to be a child molester, to have sex with little boys, sex with little girls, found in the Hadith. In fact, here's from the Quran. It states about little boys being there with the 72 virgins. You also get in the Quran, Chapter 52, 24, and there will go around boy servants of theirs to serve them as if they were preserved pearls, meaning homosexuality. Quran 56, 17, they will be served by immortal boys, meaning homosexuality. And Quran 76, 19, and around about them will serve little boys of everlasting youth. If you see them, you would think them scattered pearls, homosexuality, child molestation, I've proved on this show before that Muhammad had sex with a six-year-old girl by masturbating between her thighs. Pretty grisly stuff. All right, all right, all right. Are you awake, Adam? No, oh, no, you're not. You're asleep. Clip number three, Talata. I'm Yusuf Festus, and for the next few minutes, we'd like to talk about some of the mail that we receive here on a regular basis. I received one today talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his marriage to his wife Aisha. Is it true that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married his wife Aisha when she was a child? She was six years old. This is the story that Shakespeare probably wishes that he would have told. The time has come, your life will change Just relax, take it easy You're still young, that's my fault There's so much you still don't know I found my girl, I settled down And if I want you will get married Look at me, I am old and I'm happy I was once young like you are And I know that it's not easy to be calm When you found out what is going on Don't take your time, don't think a lot Cause I think you're really hot And you'll still be here tomorrow But your mom will not
how could I try to explain when your dad came to complain? But he'll do just what I want, say most stories. From the moment you could walk, I just knew we'd get married, and I knew I'd get my way, and you'd have to stay. And now you have to stay. We were wed when you were six, and then you were really sick. Hair fell out, and I waited for a short time. Good news is your hair grew back, and you're looking pretty. Is that you're still only nine? You're still only nine. All the times that you cried, 'cause I damaged all your insides. But it's hard, so it's hard to ignore it. If this was right. Then you'd agree, but Allo wanted this, not me. Look at me, I am old and I'm happy. I get to have whatever thrills other women and young girls. They'll still think I'm sent from God. Well, that's my story. Far from now, they won't believe. They will claim they're both happy, then they'll say I'm the example of the perfect man, the perfect man. The perfect man. Oh, Allah Akbar. Oh, Muhammad. Mohammed, will you marry my six-year-old daughter? Oh, come on, dude, you're killing me. So, Obama wants to support this. I can't tell the truth about Mohammed. Well, here it is from from the Hadith, from the Quran. Here it is. We got it. Bukhari, Volume Five, Number Two Thirty Four. Used of Estes and Nakir Zaik and all the other uh, dudes that make love to goats and all this weird stuff. Which, by the way, we have all the hadiths and on that stuff too. The Prophet was engaged to Aisha when I was a girl, six years old. That that's from your own holy book, dude. So Obama, are you telling me that if I read this, I can get thrown in jail? No more First Amendment? Oh. I, believe me, having been involved in a number of First Amendment litigation lawsuits that I've been involved in, please, please sue me. Please take me before the court. This will go up to the Supreme Court. This will be funny as heck. The Hadith, Bukhari volume. Yeah, I can imagine my attorney standing before the Supreme Court and talking about Muhammad the Prophet having weird perverted sex with a six-year-old girl. Now, I can't talk about that. So I, my son joins the United States Army. I joined the United States Marine Corps. We support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, but we're supposed to give up our First Amendment. Oh, and who's the ultimate judge? What, Nihad Awad of a unit called Council on American Islamic Relations, named as a terrorist organization by the United Arab Emirates? By the way, in Belgium today, they had another terrorist attack. Two were killed. So the Muslims, they can't control themselves because they do, what did Muhammad do? So we as Christians, when we make mistakes, we can always go back and say, well, okay, I made a mistake. And I can do, what did Jesus do? And I can solve it because Jesus is the perfect man. But under Islam, wow, is some older man, is a child molester, whoa. And he goes to the Hadith to see, well, what did Muhammad do? And he finds out Muhammad had sex with a six-year-old girl. You're killing me. From Bukhari, the prophet was engaged to Aisha when she was a girl six years old. Really, it reads, the prophet was engaged to me, Aisha, when I, Aisha, was a girl six years old. I, Aisha, was playing in a swing 
with some of my girlfriends. So this screwball named Muhammad sees a six-year-old girl swinging and it swings, Nihad Awad, Hussam, Ailush, Maher, Hot Hoot, all you lunatics out there who think what Muhammad did was the perfect man. This is a definition of a perfect man, having to marry a six-year-old girl, doing weird sexual things with a six-year-old girl from your own holy book, Bukhari, of the Hadith. Wow. Unexpectedly, Allah's apostle, Muhammad, <laughs> Muhammad the lunatic, that's where being a lunatic comes because he was worshiping Luna, the moon. So Muhammad shows up, woo, the dude's bewitched. I'm going to talk about him being bewitched too. Oh, oh, I want to marry a six-year-old girl. Oh, Allah Akbar, can I marry a six-year-old girl? No, maybe Mimo. Maybe you can marry Mimo. I don't know. Unexpectedly, Allah's apostle, Muhammad, the nutcase, the whack job, the insane man, Nihad Wad, who saw my luge, my hair hot hoot. Oh, and I know your solution is not only to shut down my First Amendment for telling the truth, but then you want to kill me too. Do I get an Allah Akbar on this? You know, we say, do I get a hallelujah on this? But they say, do I get an Allah Akbar on this? <laughs> and cut off your head. Wow, what a great religion. Unexpectedly, Allah's apostle came to me, Aisha, as a six-year-old in the afternoon, and my mother handed me over to him. At that time, I was a girl of nine years of age. That means he came back, and then he raped her when she was nine years old. Uh, if you look at the statutory law from all of the nations of the West, you will see having sex with a girl nine years old is statutory rape. And if her mother handed her over, her mother is just as guilty. She's complicit in the crime. Another Bukhari, number 236, the Prophet Muhammad married Aisha when she was a girl of six years old, of that age and consummated that marriage when she was nine years old. No wonder I hate Islam with a passion. I didn't say Muslim, I said Islam. Islam is an insane, crazy religion. It's nutty. And for Obama, the Muslim, to come in here and destroy our Constitution so that the Muslims can go and spread lies? No. Well, here's some more hadiths. Well, how about this? Muhammad kissed boys. What? Muhammad kissed boys. Allah Akbar. Let me get this right. I can't tell this truth reading it from their holy book, Sahih Bukhari, 8, colon 73, colon 27. If I talk about this, then what are they going to do? Change the Constitution? Make it a law illegal for me to speak? Good luck. It ain't going to happen. Come and lock me up for what? Telling the truth? If you go into a case for slander, defamation of character, or libel, guess what? The truth, the truth is your defense. He kissed boys. Muhammad kissed boys. From Sahih Bukhari, 8, colon, 73, colon, 27. Hussam Ailush, what are you, six foot six? You want to kill me, don't you? <laughs> Take a number, get in line. Nihad Awad. You're the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States, Council on American Islamic Relations. What? You want to kill me? Take a number. Get in line. Maher Hathut, you studied in Egypt at the feet of Hassan Bana, who created the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt in 1928. Would well, you want to kill me? Take a number. Stand in line. I really don't care. The thing that will protect us from Islam is that attitude. If you want to kill me, kill me. I don't care. Hey. If you want to leave ISIS because you can't come up with three good things that Muhammad did, well, we know he kissed boys. I've got it right here. It says, narrated Aisha, his wife again. A Bedouin came to the prophet Muhammad and said, you, Muhammad, kissed the boys. We don't kiss them, prophet Muhammad said. I cannot put mercy in your heart after Allah has taken away from it. Boom. Sahih Bukhari 873.27. But we see in the Quran 52.24, it says, And there will go around boy servants of theirs to serve them as if they were preserved pearls. That's after they kill, they go to heaven. It's a homosexual and a licentious with women too. You get your choice. 72 hories from the word whore. Um, and then you got 70, or a bunch of little boys. Doesn't say how many. Okay. All right. It says, uh, now here, this confirms that Muhammad not only liked little boys, but he liked little girls too. He was a child pervert. He was a pervert, a child molester. 
from Sahih Bukhari, which is like the King James of the Quran for the Muslim world. Seven colon sixty-two sixteen narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. When I got married, Allah's Apostle Muhammad said to me, "What type of a lady have you married?" I replied, "I have married a matron." He said, "Why don't you have the liking for the virgins or for fondling them?" Jabir also said, Allah's Apostle said, Why didn't you marry a young girl so that you may you might play with her and she with you? Dude, that's perverted. Obama, I don't care what you say. Eric Holder, I don't care what you say. I really don't care what the Supreme Court has to say because give me liberty or give me death. I'm going to tell the truth. So Muslims, if you don't like what I'm saying, either kill me or shut up. Or better yet, why don't you convert to Christianity? Hey, show me the picture of the dude nicest again. <laughs> Adam, you awake in there? You got the picture of the dude from ISIS? Ah, there he is. All right, he's a Christian now. We had to cover his face. Why? Because the Muslims want to kill him. Okay, take it down. Thank you. So let me get this right. If, if I'm a Christian and I convert over to some other religion, I don't know if any Christians will want to kill me. If I'm a Jew and I convert over to some other religion, I don't know if any other Jews want to kill me. But if I'm a Muslim, like that guy from ISIS, who listened to Joseph Nasrallah, who led him to Christ on TV, the way TV, then the Muslims all want to kill him. And Islam is supposed to be the religion of peace. Come on, everywhere you look around, you have proof, evidence, and facts that these dudes are crazy. Okay, here's another one. This is from Sahih. Sahih Bukhari also, it says, the writer, some writer, dude was riding a camel or something, was the prophet Muhammad himself. Muhammad said, what makes you in such a hurry? I replied, I am newly married. Muhammad said, did you marry a virgin or a matron? I replied, a matron. He said, Muhammad said, why didn't you marry a young girl so that you may play with her and she could play with you? Quran, the Hadith, the dude was bewitched, bewitched, lunatic, bewitched, bewitched. Bukhari, volume 7, 658, narrated Aisha, a man called Labid bin al Assam from the tribe of Bani Zarai, worked magic. The dude worked magic. He cast a magic spell on the Prophet Muhammad. Nobody ever cast a magic spell on Jesus. on Allah's Apostle Muhammad until Allah's Apostle started imagining that he had done a thing that he had not really done. He was bewitched. He was possessed. Bukhari, Volume 7, Number 660, narrated Aisha, his six-year-old wife. Magic was worked on Allah's Apostle so that he used to think that he had sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not. He was under the effect of magic. Maybe that's what happened to Obama. Maybe Obama is under an effect of magic and he wants to destroy the First Amendment. You know, he went before the United Nations and was pushing this stuff, too. We have, in fact, I have a YouTube if I have time to talk about it. Uh, narrated Aisha in, in uh, Volume 7, Number 661 of Bukhari. Narrated Aisha. Magic was worked on Muhammad so that he began to imagine things that he had not done. So Muhammad, he was so crazy about sex that he, he thought that he was having sex with all of his 13 or 14 wives or something like that. Dude's crazy. Uh, brum, brum, brum. Okay, um, clip number six. Let's see, Moha or I'm sorry, not Mohammed, Obama. Obama, Mohammed, or Mohammed, Obama. Before the United Nations trying to shut down the First Amendment, clip number six. In every country, there are those who find different religious beliefs threatening. In every culture, those who love freedom for themselves must ask themselves, uh, how much they're willing to tolerate freedom for others. And that is what we saw play out in the last two weeks, as a crude and disgusting video sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. Now, I have made it clear that the United States government had nothing to do with this video, and I believe its message must be rejected by all who respect our common humanity. 
It is an insult not only to Muslims, but to America as well. For as the city outside these walls makes clear... That's an insult to me. I, I'm not disrespecting a dude that marries a six-year-old girl. He's disrespecting himself. I'm not disrespecting a guy that wants to have sex with little boys. He's disrespecting himself. I'm reading from their holy books. Muhammad, he allowed a newborn baby boy to suck his tongue from the Hadith. Al-Amin, Al-Ma'mun, the biography of Muhammad, chapter, the first people to believe in the prophet, screwball. So Obama comes on there and he raises his right hand. That's my right hand. This is my left hand. This is my right hand. I hold the Quran in my left hand. Obama goes in front of the United Nations because we made a video that I participated in that's been so successful, people hate it, but the Muslims hate it the most because it's the truth. What did Muhammad do? It's called the innocence of Muslims. And they tried to pin it on me and my buddies making this video, which I'm laughing about because this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted the truth to come out. Nobody paid about, nobody paid any concern. They didn't care about the video. And I don't care how bad it is, it's the truth. I don't care how good or how bad my show is, it's the truth. I do the best I can. All of the techs here do a great job. I don't know how good or bad I do. We tell the truth. Um, Mohammed Obama or Obama Mohammed doesn't like it. So he goes to the United Nations whining to them that he wants to change the First Amendment of the United States. So we got a million four hundred thousand people in the United States military who raised their right hand to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the First Amendment, and Mohammed Obama or Obama Mohammed wants to destroy it. You destroy the First Amendment for we the people to peaceably assemble to petition the government for redress of grievances. My grievances are simple. Islam what did Muhammad do going out and mur murdering Charlie Hebdo and burning down everything that they don't like? That is a grievance. We want it stopped. All right, here's about Muhammad sucking on the tongue of a newborn baby boy. I have never met anybody that's ever done this or contemplated about it. I have never met anybody like this, but Muhammad did it. It's in his holy book. Nihadawad, Husam Ailush, Maher Hathut. Ah. Musa Mil Siddiqui and all the rest of you guys who are all upset and want to kill me right now, but say, oh, we love the First Amendment, we love freedom of speech, and oh, Allah Akbar, can't we all just get along? <laughs> all right, for it was narrated by Fatima bint Assad, the mother of Ali. May Allah be pleased with her, who related that when she gave birth to her son, it was the Prophet Muhammad who named him Ali, and the Prophet spat in the baby's mouth, that's nice. The prophet Muhammad spat into the baby who was just born his mouth and allowed the baby to suck the tongue of the prophet till he fell asleep. That is one sick dude. All right, clip number nine, clip number nine. If you live in the West and are concerned with Islam and the Islamization of your country, this video has a message for you. What Islam is Not was published in the frontpagemagazine.com on April 21, 2008 and is an adaptation from a book written by Dr. Peter Hammond, Slavery, Terrorism, and Islam. What Islam is Not Islam is not a religion, nor is it a cult. In its fullest form, it is a complete, total, 100% system of life. Islam has religious, legal, political, economic, social, and military components. The religious component is a beard for all of the other components. Islamization begins when there are sufficient Muslims in a country to agitate for their religious rights. When politically correct, tolerant, and culturally diverse societies agree to Muslim demands for their religious rights, some of the other components tend to creep in as well. Here's how it works. As long as the Muslim population remains around or under 2% in any given country, they will be, for the most part, regarded as a peace-loving minority 
and not as a threat to other citizens. This is the case in United States, Australia, Canada, China, Italy, and Norway. At 2 to 5 percent, they begin to convert from other ethnic minorities and disaffected groups, often with major recruiting from the jails and among street gangs. This is happening in Denmark, Germany, United Kingdom, Spain, and Thailand. From 5% on, they exercise an excessive influence in proportion to their percentage of the population. For example, they will push for the introduction of halal food, which is clean food by Islamic standards, thereby securing food preparation jobs for Muslims. They will increase pressure on supermarket chains to feature halal on their shelves, along with threats for failure to comply. This is occurring in... France, Philippines, Sweden, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Trinidad and Tobago. At this point, they will work to get the ruling government to allow them to rule themselves within their ghettos under Sharia, the Islamic law. The ultimate goal of the Islamists is to establish Sharia law over the entire world. When Muslims approach 10% of the population, they tend to increase lawlessness as a means of complaint about their conditions. In Paris, we are already seeing car burnings. Any non-Muslim action offends Islam and results in uprisings and threats, such as in Amsterdam and in other western cities, with opposition to Muhammad cartoons and films exposing Islam. Such tensions are seen daily, particularly in Muslim sections in Guyana, India, Israel, Kenya, and Russia. Okay, so that's what we saw in France. Look, it's proof, evidence, and facts. It's 1,400 years of good science. Good science, you can observe it, you can measure it, you can repeat it. It's repeated, 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 repeated. Every country where Islam goes has the same thing. Thank God in the United States it's less than 2%, somewhere right around 1% or so. But the Muslims have leverage due to the Saudi Arabians bribing so many of our Republican and Democratic officials that that's why they're allowed now for Obama, Mohammed, or Mohammed Obama to go to the United Nations and make these um, decrees that he wants to lock up people like me and Joseph Nasrallah and others who tell the truth about Islam. Okay, so we also know that Muhammad was a black guy, and we know from the Quran, 22 verses in the Quran, that a good Muslim does what Muhammad did. And so therefore, according to our standards, since he had sex with a six-year-old girl and was doing these weird things with a newborn baby boy, and all of this homosexuality and everything, we know that a good Muslim doing what Muhammad did is a bad person. And Muhammad was a white guy, a white guy, white, white guy, put that on, white guy, Nihad uh, Wad, who saw my luge of Corona, my hair, hot hoot of Los Angeles, and Musa Mil Siddiqui of Garden Grove, put that on your head, leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. He was all around back, bad, bad guy. Okay, and again, now we had the guy there, the picture of the guy that ISIS who converted to Christianity. We can't show his face because all of them ISIS guys would kill him. Wow, what a great religion. Maybe, maybe that's why Nihad Awad, Hussam Mailush, Maher Hadhut, and uh, Musa Mil Siddiqui don't get out of Islam because they're afraid they'll get killed by their buddies. Okay, Bukhari Volume 1, Muhammad is a white guy white guy with black slaves. It says, uh, while we were sitting with a prophet in the mosque, a man came riding on a camel. He made his camel kneel down in the mosque, tied its foreleg, and then said, who among you is Muhammad? At that time, the prophet was sitting among us, leaning on his arm. We replied, the white man, white man, white man, white man, reclining on his arm. Bukhari, volume 2, number 122. Muhammad is a white man. Bukhari, volume 2, number 141. So this would be for the Nation of Islam and, uh, what's his name, Louis Farrakhan. So all you guys who are black Muslims and you call me uh, a white devil, well, call the Prophet Muhammad a white devil. 
Bukhari, volume 2, number 141. Uh, the prophet never raised his hands for any invocation except for that of Istiska, and he used to raise them so much that the whiteness of his armpits became visible. Muhammad is a white man. Bukhari, volume 4, number 744, narrated Ismasmil bin Abi Khalid. I heard Abu Juhaifa saying, I saw the prophet and al Hassan ibn Ali resembled him. I said to Abu Juhaifa, describe him, that is, Muhammad, for me. He said, Muhammad was a white dude, and his beard was black with some white hair in it. He promised to give us 13 young she-camels, but he died before we got to them. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we know he is a white guy. It says, and this is from Sahih Muslim 3901. And Muhammad bought him for two black slaves. Muhammad, this is from Ibn Qayyam al Jaziya. A great scholar and Islamic historian says in his book, Zad al Ma'ad, I don't care if I speak Arabic, you know. I don't really speak German. I really don't speak uh, French. I don't really speak Italian. But I know I can go to translations, and they're good. It's interesting to me because um, I know the Muslims say, Oh, al Akbar, if you can't read it in Arabic, it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> on you. It does. We understand this stuff. Uh, Muhammad, had, uh, Muhammad had many male and female slaves. He used to buy and sell them. But Muhammad purchased more slaves than he sold. Muhammad once sold one black slave for two black slaves. Um, let's see. This is narrated. This is Sahih Muslim Book 10, number 3901, narrated Jabir ibn Abdullah. There came a slave and pledged allegiance to Allah's apostle, and he bought him for two black slaves, referring to Allah's apostle, Muhammad. There you go. Okay. So um, let's have a little fun, and let's say the uh, clip number 12. Clip number 12. Clip number 12. The healthiest thing we can do is just ignore this and pretend it doesn't exist. Just like we do with the squid. Uh, earthquake. Yeah, yeah, truck going by. Ignoring the giant squid does nothing to diminish the fact that there is a giant squid in the room. Or the fact that it's dangerous. This week, Pastor Terry Jones burned his Quran. And there were riots in Afghanistan with at least 14 people at the UN offices being killed, lynched, two of them beheaded by a bloodthirsty Islamic mob. Indeed, so incensed was this crowd by religious intolerance that they burned an effigy and beat it with a cross. Do I support Jones's motives? Okay, so in other words, Obama and all these guys are saying that if Steve Klein or Terry Jones or anybody tells the truth about Islam, I tell the truth. I read from their holy books. They want to go out and kill everybody, so therefore we got to destroy the First Amendment. As I told the mainstream media, as I was surrounded by 20 reporters at a time, coming, going, coming, going, coming, going from 5 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night when the FBI came to my house. When the mainstream media accused me of causing all of the riots and bloodshed in the Middle East and killing the ambassador to Libya, I said, hey, look, let me give you a metaphor. If I'm called into a courtroom and the opposing attorney says, Mr. Klein, why did you read those things about Muhammad? Don't you know it causes Muslims to go crazy and murder everybody? I would say... I would still continue to tell the truth about Muhammad and Islam until they kill me. And then I told all the reporters multiple times from the beginning in the morning until the FBI left my house. I said, you will have to kill me to shut me up. I gave this metaphor. If I was called into a court of law and the opposing attorney said, why did you say these things? I say, so that people would not be found in the slavery of Islam. So that if I was in the courtroom, and the courtroom audience was composed of Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, and all of the ISIS guys, and I'm reading as I'm doing right now, I would still continue to read. I would tell the truth until they killed me. But as I was reading the truth about Islam, about Muhammad having sex with little boys, little girls, with dead women, which he did, 
masturbating between the thighs of his six-year-old wife, Aisha, doing all these things. And I see that ISIS and Boko Haram and all these guys, like, killed, murdered Charlie Hebdo in the attack in Belgium today. If I see him getting more and more angry, or the Boston Marathon bomber, or the guys that flew the airplanes into the World Trade Center, they're getting more and more angry, I would continue to read until they killed me. And then if they left the courtroom, as I proved how evil and wicked Islam is by telling the truth about Islam from their Quran and their Hadith, and they go out and murder everybody, am I responsible for that? No. I'm responsible for self-control. If somebody comes up and insults my mother, they, consult, they insult my wife, they insult my Constitution, they insult my Marine Corps, they insult my United States Army, they insult, they insult, they insult. I have self-control. I have self-control. What did Muhammad do? He didn't have self-control. He went nuts and went out and killed people. What did Jesus do? He had self-control. He had self-control. Even during his trial in the book of John, it states in there, when they punch him in the mouth, and he's beginning to transition now from the lamb. He knows he's going to die, but he's getting ready to come back as the Lion of Judah. He tells the Sanhedrin, don't hit me. If I have told the truth, don't hit me. That's in the book of John. That's in the book of John. Why do the Muslims want to kill everybody who tells the truth about Islam? Well, Muhammad was bewitched, demon-possessed. Wild man, crazy man, the word lunatic comes from a follower of Muhammad. What did Muhammad do? And they go lunatic. They can't control themselves. They cannot control themselves. All right, clip number 14. Clip number 14. In 2004, you see, Ayan Hirsi Ali produced a short film called Submission, which highlighted the challenges women face in Islamic culture. It would cost the film's director his life. Theo Van Gogh was walking down a street in Amsterdam when a Muslim fanatic approached him, shot him multiple times, tried to decapitate him, and then stuck a note to his chest with a knife. That note was a death sentence for Ayan Hirsi Ali, who remains under threat to this day. It does not stop her from speaking out. She is a political activist, former member of Dutch Parliament. I cut it there because, God bless her, um, but she doesn't understand the common law. She doesn't understand that ideas, Islam springs from what did Muhammad do, just as Christianity springs from what did Jesus do. They don't understand. Okay. So in 60 seconds, Adam will show that picture of the ISIS guy in 60 seconds. Oh, okay. Very good. Thank you. This guy now... He's gone from what did Muhammad do to what did Jesus do. Well, everybody in the world knows that Jesus didn't go out and rape little girls, didn't rape little boys, didn't behead people, didn't attack people, didn't have armies, didn't go out and do all these crazy things. He was not a lunatic. He was the prince of peace. And everywhere where people do what did Jesus do, you find the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity because it flows all governments flow from some religion. We've talked about this before. Real simple. The 57 flags or constitutions or national anthems of 100% of the Muslim countries, one way or the other, has a symbol of Islam, what did Muhammad do, or their national anthem, what did Muhammad do, or their constitution is based on, what did Muhammad do. Contrary to that, you had the flags of old Europe, Christendom, from hundreds of years ago that has an image of a cross so that you have what did Jesus do on the military crescent or the navy sail, the ship across, because the common law is based on what did Jesus do. The Ten Commandments, we have all kinds of proof, evidence, and facts. We have Article 3 of the Northwest Ordinance of 1784 and 1787, that states that before a territory could become a state that they had to understand the common law, which is based on religion. And so, therefore, we were sending out missionaries to the territories to help the people understand that our common law was based on the Ten Commandments, Christianity. I have Department of Defense documents, 1957. It clearly states 
that the duty of every military officer at that time, 1957, was to defend the Ten Commandments because that was the basis of our common law, which was the basis of our Constitution. Clip number 15. Clip number 15. Muslim community. Muslim community, Jewish community, uh, a number of Muslim leaders called on their uh, uh, community, although I don't like the term community, but let's remember that France uh, has a strong uh, Muslim population, 8 million people approximately, that's 8% of the population. Well, these leaders call on their people uh, to take to the street. We all know now that that was staged and it was a photo op and that they were off in another street separate and that there was just those leaders and a few people back there for the photo op. But the reason I'm showing that is it's from the book of Revelations. They will cry peace, peace, and there will be no peace. You got the President Hollande of France and Obama stating that our job under our First Amendment is to protect all religions. No, it's not. No, it absolutely is not. The First Amendment and the Second Amendment are not absolute. As much as I love the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, they are not absolute. Second Amendment, when Wyatt Earp was in Tombstone and in Dodge City, he made sure that they could only carry guns outside the city limits. When they came into the city, they had to check their guns in. That was for a specific point, time, and place. They got their guns back. There was no harm, no foul. It's not absolute. The key there was safety, safety, safety. And the cowboys were coming in and shooting up the town and injuring innocent people. So the Second Amendment is not absolute. If a guy is a murderer or a felon and somehow he gets out of jail, he's not allowed to have a gun, praise God. And the First Amendment is not absolute either. Speech is limited. You cannot falsely cry fire in a crowded theater. Press is limited. You cannot go out and slander, libel, and defame people. If you tell the truth, it's not slander, it's not libel, and it's not defaming, it's telling the truth. We are allowed to peaceably, not violently, we are allowed to peaceably go out to petition the government for a redress of grievance, which is what I do because I can't stand Boko Haram and ISIS and these guys out there murdering everybody. I don't like it. I don't like Nihad Awad, Hussam Ailush, Musamil Siddiqui, and Maher Hathut lying that Islam is a religion of peace. It absolutely is not. And seeing President Alon and the rest of them doing that photo op demanding peace, what, at any price, like Nebel Chamberlain during World War II when he held up the piece of paper and said there will be peace in our time? Not with Islam. If you want peace, prepare for war. If you want peace, prepare for war. If you want peace, have the best police you can have. Have the best deputy sheriffs you can have. Have the best military you can have. Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Marines. Have the best you can, can prepare those who sweat the most, bleed the least. If you want peace, prepare for war. This is right out of Romans 13.4, which is the basis of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. If you want peace, Peace, prepare for war. There's very few people who come after our United States military in the United States and attack them. Very, very few people. Sure, when we go over to Iraq and Afghanistan, Vietnam, Korea, World War II, World War I, Civil War, all of these wars, some are right, some are wrong. I believe in the just warfare theory. Got no problems with that at all. I believe it's very biblical. I believe it's based on Romans 13.4. The, the civil magistrate is the minister of God, properly using the sword in accordance with the Ten Commandments. The gentleman before me, Jason, on his show with Wendy and Cindy, pointed out that the moral law, there's three types of law, the moral law, the civil law, and the uh, ceremonial law. The ceremonial law ended with the resurrection of Jesus. The civil law of Jerusalem ended in 70 A.D. when they conquered um, and destroyed uh, Jerusalem. But the moral law is forever because the moral law is, is the nature of God. When God did the Ten Commandments, he wrote it with his very finger in tables of stone. As John Locke said, if he hadn't done that, man would immediately erase it and rewritten the Ten Commandments. 
the two great commandments, to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And similar to that, to love your neighbor. Upon this rests all the law and prophets. It's, it's all so easy. Clip number 13, and we'll end on this clip, and then we're done for the day. Clip number 13. Association of New York and a senior strategist for Campaign to Take on Hate. She's in our studio tonight. Hi, Linda. Hello. Give me a reaction to what you've seen today. The reaction is a horrific attack on innocent people, um, journalists and uh, police officers, and my condolences to all those impacted in the Paris community. You came in and you sat on the set, and I, I get the feeling this has been wearing on you today. Can you talk about why? Um, it's very personal uh, for me to think about, you know, all the responses and the, the talk about Islam and, and Muslims and how this represents the faith of a, an entire faith community of 1.5 billion people. Um, and me personally, I support freedom of expression and freedom of speech and to, to believe that there are people who have been killed in a place uh, like Paris is... Um... <laughs> That's the best joke I've heard since Niha Dawad came on and started the show by saying we respect the freedom of speech of the First Amendment. That's a pretty good joke saying we, we feel bad. We feel bad for those who did what Muhammad do. Shame on them. Liars. Continue to support the way TV. Continue to watch and see as Islam grows. It's going to get more and more dangerous. And Nihad Awad, that lady there, Hussam Mailush, Maher Hadhud, Musa Siddiqui will continue to do what good Muslims do, doing what Muhammad did. They will lie, they will lie, and they will lie because they believe in a false prophet who is controlled, bewitched by Satan. Good night. Yeah.